Hello and welcome back. This is CY and uh, together with me in this session is Dr. Suda from Hi. the Faculty of Business and Accountancy and we're going to talk about fast track to becoming a chartered accountant. But before we jump into the topic, let me just welcome you once again to the chat with Segi series where we engage uh, the experts that are in Segi University and colleges to talk to you about how to make the right decision in choosing a program uh, that you desire. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Shuda. Yes. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, thank you, CY, for um, giving me this opportunity to talk about, the, you know, what should I do if I want to become a chartered accountant? And I'm sure those of you out there who are watching, you probably have this in mind. Wow, what? What is the first step into becoming a chartered accountant? Yeah, so uh, I think you've already introduced me. Yeah, I'm a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Business Accounting and Law, and actually I specialize in course and management accounting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us this morning. So let's jump right into it: accounting and finance. Mm -hmm. I think when students choose accounting or finance, I mm -hmm. think their end goal, or I think the starting step of having an amazing accounting and uh, finance career is to become a chartered accountant. Yes. There is many, many uh, students' goals. Um, so can you explain the programs, the accounting and finance programs that SEGI is offering and its pathway for students to eventually become a chartered accountant? Okay, so, you know, I, I always tell this to anybody who I meet. Even sometimes, even the other day, I was talking to my student's uh, cousin. She's mm. only 16 years old. And the first thing I asked was, what are you interested in? What do you want to study? What do you like? So this is the first question I always ask anybody that approaches me. I ask you, what is your passion? What do you like? And if you say your passion is to become an accountant, okay, mm -hmm. you love numbers, mm -hmm. then by all means, there are so many uh, pathways to becoming an accountant. And I think um, what the Ministry of Higher Education has already done so far is that they have allowed uh, students from different types of background. In fact, you can be a working adult and you can still join into the program. So for example, um, let's say you are, you only have one credit in your SPM, but you want to become an accountant. You know, I have a student from Penang uh, that uh, I, I, I was teaching one of the subjects, you know, and she was telling me, I want to become an accountant. Miss, what do I do? So I said, okay, you, you can still become an accountant even though you have one credit. You finish your certificate in business and you join the diploma in accounting program which the beauty of it is available in all our campuses yeah and she's in penang so i told her if you want to come to our kota damansara branch or subang jaya branch or kuala lumpur branch by all means you can because yeah. we are offering the same program mm -hmm. so um she can you can come in that way which is two years mm -hmm. then from the diploma in accounting they can do the bachelor of accounting and finance they go into the second year right so that is one pathway for this particular student. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have three credits, um, important, you must have a credit in mathematics. Yeah. yeah. So you can join the diploma in accounting program straight. You don't have to do a certificate. Two years. Um, some of my diploma in accounting students, what they do is they work. They want to, um, sometimes they have family obligations, right? So they want to make some money and um, contribute to the family. So they do work. And some of them, what they do is they want to just continue. They decide, you know what, Miss, I'm going to do it. I want to continue. So they go into the second year of Bachelor of Accounting and Finance CAT. They can do that. But if you have five credits mm. in SPM, mm. you can straight go into the Foundation in Commerce, Foundation in Business, or Foundation in Arts, which again is available in all the campuses. Exactly. Uh, that, that is what I love because as I said, uh, CY, I can have a student in Penang or I have a student in Kuching who simply just wants to come to Kuala Lumpur just to experience what is it like in Klang Valley because mm -hmm. they want to work, you know, they want to they want to work right straight away, get a job straight away. So I say, oh, by all means, yes, you can come here and just continue. You know, you may have already done five subjects back in your campus uh, in Penang or Subang Jaya or Kuching. You can continue the rest in Kota Damansara. Mm, That's because great. it's so integrated. Yes. So you finish your Bachelor of Accounting and Finance and uh, the, after that is doing your professional paper. Mm. Uh, so the professional paper, uh, for example, Bachelor of Accounting and Finance, our collaboration of partnership with UCLAN is we get nine paper uh, ACCA exemption. But University of Greenwich, which mm. is available in um, all, the our, all the colleges, mm. uh, now I like that because you not only get uh, nine paper exemption for ACCA, there's also SEMA 
ICAEW and CPA Australia eight paper exemption. Mm -hmm. So that is really good, and it is definitely, a, a, I would say, a selling point <laughs> to get students to come exactly. and study here because the pathway is so much. Yes. Yeah. So speaking of that, right? I mm. think generally for a student who wants to pursue accounting and finance. Yeah. Um, and become a chartered accountant eventually. I think yeah. in the market, there are two major ways for you to yes. do it. The first uh, pathway or a more a direct pathway, they would say, mm. is go through an ACCA yes. right after XP. Yes. Or another way is what Segi is offering, you know, go through a diploma and then a degree uh, in accounting and finance, right. or, you know, go through a foundation and then a de degree yes. in accounting and finance. Yes. And eventually, you know, use the paper exemptions, go through your, go through the uh, paper, uh, seek through your papers and then eventually become chartered accountant. The destination is the Correct. same, but it's two different ways of going about it. What is the difference? What are the differences <coughs> yes. between these two pathways? Okay. Sadly, ACCA is really challenging. This is that's what, what that's what a lot of students. This is have. what um everybody in the industry, I mean you can ask any chartered accountant or anybody working in the accounting line. If you tell them professional paper, the first thing they'll tell you it's hundred percent exam. So when it's a 100% exam, you are trained uh, to, to go for this 100% exam question. So it's, it's more of um, practicing for a final exam. And the challenge is the questions are there are degree and master's level. Um, if you look at ACCA, they have, you know, you do your uh, applied, they have applied knowledge first, the three mm. papers. Then you've got the second level, which is applied skills, six papers. And then the final four papers, which is strategic planning. And it's really difficult. And uh, of course, if you ask any student, they will tell you, oh, this paper is the most difficult. No, no, no. This paper is the most difficult. So everybody has their own difficult paper. Yeah. And in fact, even SEMA as well. During my time, SEMA was a killer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> So it was a killer. And uh, the level of failures was pretty high. So I'm. if you look at Bachelor of Accounting and Finance, it is a degree qualification. Whereas ACCA and other professional uh, uh, qualifications, they are professional qualifications. It's not a degree. And the thing about the two is, well, professional qualification is 100% exam. Whereas degree, I love degree because you are molding the student to have not just go not just go for exams but go for do your assignments and there's a lot of critical thinking it's just mm. it's not just applied knowledge here it's also about critical thinking so there is a level of progression in terms of and also the level of difficulty okay so of course by year three the level of difficulty is there but the students are already trained mm. they are prepared for that level of difficulty and the assignments, some of the assignments can be 100%, some are the weightage, it could be 40% uh, assignment, 60% exam, but they are well trained. So it's by, by year three, in fact, they go for internship. And, I, and I'm, I'm very happy to say that our students, when it comes to internship, they do a very good job and we get very good feedback. Uh, in fact, one of my, actually not just one, a few of my students have gone into the big four audit firms as interns, and they were offered um, uh, jobs right upon graduation. Wow. One of them is Kit. I asked him to watch today. <laughs> Kit. <laughs> if you are here, leave a comment yeah. below. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the beauty of it. So again, uh, with you finish your Bachelor of Accounting and Finance, you do your balance papers, then you have to have three years working experience. Now, most of uh, the students, when they finish the Bachelor of Accounting and Finance, they are actually already working. So to get that three working three years working experience, no issue, mm -hmm. very fast. Then you register with Malaysian Institute of Accountants to become a chartered accountant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's it's actually a safer route and it's yes. also a more interesting route because yes. you get to learn so many things along the way. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So let's talk about the bachelor's in accounting and finance, yes, yes. and let's talk about SEGI. You know, accounting and finance degree it is offered almost everywhere. Yes, you are right. Every institution, yeah. almost every college, almost every university offer some sort of accounting and finance program. Yes. What makes SEGI special? Okay, well, firstly, I'm very proud to say that SEGI has been around since 1977. Mm -hmm. And our first uh, campus is Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you're a working adult, uh, you, would be, you would have known or you, are, you already know that SEGI Kuala Lumpur, very strategic spot right there in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. 
So we were always known, and we are still known as uh, the university or college that is uh, a leader when it comes to business programs, business accounting programs till today. Okay, so that is the beauty of it. Now, yes, we offer many, many different programs, undergraduate and postgraduate, mm -hmm. but the beauty of it is that our students are very much involved in the industry. For example, I took my class for an industry visit to one of the factories. And it's not just a simple industry visit where they, you know, they actually see how, uh, for cost and management accounting, you've got to see how products are being made, uh, where are the resources from. And in fact, right after this session, they had so many questions that they were asking the production plant officer. And she was like so thrilled with those questions because like I said, they are trained to uh, fit into the industry employability wise no issue at all mm -hmm. um another thing is the students are encouraged to join clubs mm -hmm. societies and they are the project leaders of these events so they are the ones bringing in the sponsors together with the lecturer in charge of course and this gets them to be independent and gets them to work on their presentation skills marketing pitch um which in fact, actually one of our subjects is entrepreneurship. You know, we have That's an amazing. entrepreneurship subject mm -hmm. and they really learn from their subject. And then from there, I can see them doing mm -hmm. a good job when they have these projects that they have to do. Yeah. Speaking of um, entrepreneurship, I think this is one blind spot uh, that I notice a lot of finance, uh, accounting and finance students tend to overlook. Mm -hmm. A lot of them think that when it comes to accounting and finance, the, 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 the money is in, you know, getting a job, let's do... Let's have an accounting career but actually you know the money is when you uh, have some sort of entrepreneur entrepreneurial mm -hmm. uh, skills uh, you start your accounting business you, you start your firm or mm -hmm. you know if you're working in big four you climb your way up to eventually become a partner yeah. which requires skills like presentation skills yes entrepreneurial skills project project management skills and yes. stuff like that these are things that a lot of people tend to overlook when they enroll yes, in an accounting and finance program. Yes. Mm. But so our students, actually, I have a... Uh, one thing uh, I like mm. about SEGI is we have a good mix of diversity mm. in terms of um, student ethnicity and race and from many countries. So I have a few students that they graduated and they went back to their home country and they opened up their own business, import-export business, uh, healthcare, you know, and healthcare in the sense that uh, it was a joint venture with another friend of him, his who is a pharmacist. Okay, so I like that they are not just looking at um, being a chartered accountant or working in the finance industry. Mm. They are also moving forward. In fact, I actually have a student. Um, she's from China. Her name is uh, Deng Nan. She uh, graduated with a Bachelor of Accounting and Finance and I thought, okay, she's going to become a Chartered Accountant. No, she went to the University of Bristol through my recommendation and she got a Master's in Accounting distinction. Mm -hmm. And now she was offered PhD to do her PhD in um, Bristol, University of Bristol, and she's going to be do something to, along this way with accounting, mm -hmm. sustainability accounting. So I'm very proud of her, although that, you know, she's not uh, looking into getting a job and working straight away and, um, you know, uh, studying and finishing up her ACCA. But she has taken dif her different route whereby she wants to move into PhD and research. So that's interesting. So our students, uh, well, not to say everybody wants to become a chartered accountant. There are some who want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Some, they just, they want to move into research. Mm -hmm. So that, that is The beautiful. sky is the limit. And I that's think right. the key word here is think bigger. Don't Correct. just think accounting and finance. Don't just think accountants with this program. Yes. It, think of it as a, as, a, as a propelling point, as a starting point to many wonderful things that you can do. Absolutely. With your career. I 100% agree. Exactly. Yes. And, I, and I think this leads, us, uh, this leads us very well to the next question that mm. I'm going to ask you, uh, Dr. Suda. And I think this is something that you are extremely passionate about. Because yes. I think I you have put on some <laughs> slides uh, just to talk about this segment. And that yeah, yeah, is... Yeah, yeah. Success stories, Dr. Yes. Suda. Actually, success I have a ton stories. of success stories. Let me put it up. Yes. Let me see. So the um, question here is, please share with us some success stories of your accounting and finance yeah. uh, graduates. So, Let's go. Okay. So, uh, you know, CY, when you told me that we were going to have this uh, 
chat with Segi session, mm -hmm. the first person that came into my mind was Tan Pek Tong. And, mm. I, and he's very busy. He's busy at the moment. So I had to reach out to um, his wife. His <laughs> wife is also one of our students. Wow. You see, they met in class. Huh? Sorry, Pek Tong, I said it out. But anyway, so I said, Hey, Pek Tong, I, I want your, I want to showcase your success, you know. So Pek Tong was one of those active students in SEGI. In fact, he was the president of the SEGI Alumni Association from 2019 to 2020. He's a chartered accountant and he is with, uh, he's a retail finance manager in Batam, Malaysia. In fact, his batch, there's a few. In fact, we have another student, which is not inside the slide, Ashley mm -hmm. Gomez. He is the head of finance in Heineken, Heineken Malaysia. Amazing. And another student, I, this, this student is not in the slide, Tommy Chan. He is a senior tax manager in Deloitte now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, I think I got a lot more. See, I told you she was passionate. Uh, Moving on, who else? Okay, now we just finished International Women's Day and I was uh, trying to put some female students that have successfully graduated. And I thought of Komati because she called me like about a week ago and told me, you know, she just gave birth to her second child. Then immediately I was thinking, oh my God, yes, Komati, you are a great example of women who are working and you can still have a career. And it's never too late to do her ACCA. And she is already pursuing her ACCA. But it, it is challenging, you know, having a family, working and studying. But you Possibly. can do it. You can definitely do it. Because I feel that most uh, bosses, they are, of course, very supportive mm -hmm. of their staff uh, pursuing ACCA and becoming a chartered accountant. Exactly. And and I think in, in the case of uh, being a working professional and mm -hmm. studying at the same time and being a mom at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, having your boss's support is very important. Yes. Having your family support yes. is very important. I think most importantly, having lecturers and academics support you know, to guide you through that journey is something that is critical. And I think in Segi, that is what we are very passionate about. Yes. In fact, I'm very happy to say that our team of experts in the field in terms of tax audit, uh, finance, accounting, and myself, management accounting, because we are engaged with the industry, I think our students are very well-rounded, not just education, but also industry-wise. They are, you know, employability, as I said mm. earlier, easy for them to get jobs after they graduate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and if you have missed uh, Dr. Stevens. Uh, session this morning he spoke about you know when it comes to running a business program accounting and finance included there are yes. two very important stakeholders that must come together one is the academics yes. the other is the industry and yes. segi is one of the one of the leading institution in bringing you know industry real life projects into the classroom yes. more about that when you look at uh, dr steven's uh, session but coming back here success stories who's next okay i have okay this is uh my student, I'm supposed to meet her up one of these days, Miss Nurul Hazika. Uh, she was one of our students that graduated in 2019 and oh my God, during the lockdown, you know. So I think the lockdown was very challenging for every one of us and especially if you are a student that is also pursuing ACCA. But I'm glad that, you know, that she is still continuing to plan to pursue her ACCA. In fact, she's in PKF Malaysia and they, they, they specialize in audit tax and business advisory. So yeah, I'm actually going to meet her up and ask her about her plan, you know, mm. after this. I mean, because she is really passionate to become a chartered accountant. Mm. And I can see that you are so passionate where, you know, you don't stop at students during their, their duration yes. of studies. When they it's, finish, you still engage yes, with them. Yes, I still engage with them. In fact, some of them, uh, in fact, I have one student that graduated and he has, uh, he took his SEMA, he finished his SEMA. I actually called him back to Segi. Wong Herming, I didn't tell him that I'm having this session, but uh, Wong Herming, he was our accounting and finance student. He has a SEMA, uh, he's SEMA graduate. Uh, his dad was an accountant himself and he wanted to follow his father's footpath. And yeah, I called him back to talk to the students uh, really about uh, getting the students to understand uh, after graduating and working, what's next. So mm -hmm. he was talking more about the type of skills needed in the industry, the mm -hmm. type of software training that you must go for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And next. Ah, Miss um, Chan Imu. Okay, Miss Chan Imu. Okay, she, uh, she uh, is one of those students that even while in class, she was already working part-time. Oh. Yes. I don't know how she did it, 
but she's one of those students that is very she excels in terms of this is okay i'm doing uh accounting i'm learning accounting but i also want to practice it so she was doing it part-time i think on saturday sundays uh in a small accounting firm and she's currently pursuing her acca she graduated in july 2021 mm. I see. And this is my student, Li Yong Ping. So this is one of our, our recent graduates. You can see she just graduated in 2022, but she's already working. Mm -hmm. Audit associate at LLT Lim and uh, Associates. And she's also planning to do her ACCA. Wow. Okay, this was the student I was talking about, Kit. And another friend of his, now, they were the two students that I gave them referral letters. They got into the big four. And after that, um, you know, as you said, the sky is the limit. Now mm. he's a tech senior at Russell Bedford and he mm. specializes in transfer pricing. And he's also going to plan to do his ACC. And he's so good looking. Yes, he is. You should you should check out his Instagram. This is the thing about uh, students like him. You can be you can be doing a very stressful job, but you need to have time for yourself to rest and relax and pursue other hobbies as well. Just like you, yes, Dr. yes, yes. <laughs> Ah, this was the student I was talking about, Deng Nan. So, um, Deng, Nan, Deng Nan, now she's currently in the UK. So, I dropped her an email and said, Deng Nan, I need a photograph of you. I want to I want to show you as one of our successful students because she sent me an email um, telling me that, you know, she was very um, um, passionate about the area that she wanted to pursue, which is uh, environmental accounting. And I was teaching environmental cost uh, costing environmental costing so there was one particular topic that she was interested in that's why she's doing she's decided to move in that area mm, for her mm. phd amazing yeah oh, yeah that's all yeah that's <laughs> all actually i have as i said see why i have tons so and much tons. More. yeah yes but thank you, thank you very much for sharing. I think, Dr. Suda, one of the things that I've noticed about you that, yes, that is very me. special, uh, being a lecturer is your, your engagement with the students. Yes. And, and at Seiki, this is something that we emphasize very strongly as well. Mm -hmm. We don't treat our students as just students. We treat yes. them as part of our network and, and we treat them as friends. And I see one of my students there, Habib yeah, Faraj. Oh, let me feature <laughs> him. <laughs> let Hello. me see. You see? Yeah. No, he's not. I think he hide himself, is it? Let me <laughs> yeah. let me contact him later. What do you? I'm going to ask him. What did you think of the session? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, coming coming back to what I was saying, yes. right? Engagement with students is very important. And Correct. Dr. Suda, I think one of the things that uh, I think students really appreciate about you is you going the extra mile of helping them with recommendation letters. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, pulling in your network to help Correct. them succeed in your career, Correct. in their career, and things like that. So. Thank you very much, Dr. Suda, for doing this. You're most welcome. Sumai. One final question before I let you yes. go, though. So what would be your final advice to students who are thinking about pursuing accounting and finance? What would be your advice? Okay. Um, if you are, you know, if you love accounting and you are one of those students that either you took accounting in school before or you didn't, you know, I do have some science stream students that they wanted to do accounting, but just so happened they took the science stream i'm telling you it doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether you are in the science stream or art stream if deep down in your heart you know you have a passion for numbers you love accounting a double entry for that example you can start with simple double entry then please by all means come and to any of our branches and speak to our counselors in fact you can reach out to uh, me as well ah. okay and uh, I would definitely uh, help you out and guide you. Mm -hmm. uh, and most importantly, do not give up in your passion. When you know you love something and you want to pursue it, please go all out and go for it. As I said, the pathway in that we are offering, it doesn't matter whether it's a one credit, a three credit, or a five credit, there is a pathway for you. In fact, I just want to quickly say this, we even have APEL-A, mm. those for working students who don't have uh, academic uh, credentials, but you have working experience, you can still join the program through APLA. Mm -hmm. Yes. There is a pathway for everyone. Yes, there is. Thank you very much, Dr. Suda, for joining You're us this welcome. morning. Ty. Thank you. And to all of our viewers, thanks for tuning in. Um, we have a few more sessions after this, so stay tuned. We will be back after the break. Thanks. Bye. Bye.